I think we're confused a little bit about what love is. In the English language, we only really have one word for what love is. In other languages, like the Greeks, they had a whole handful of the words that mean love, but different types of love. I want to focus on two of them, eros and agape. Eros would probably best be understood as that passionate love, that love associated with romantic desire, sexual desire, but not limited only to that sphere. You may have felt eros when you um, heard a song that just so moved your heart. It's this longing toward all that is good, true, and beautiful. Maybe you saw a movie and a certain scene, a dialogue between two people, it just, it just really inspired you. You felt, you felt a movement in your heart. Or you saw a sunset or something beautiful like the ocean. These are all the, the deeply moving things that we feel associated with that love of eros. Agape is a love that is selfless. It is other-directed, it is focused on not, not me and counting the cost, but is a love about gift and doing what is good for the other, purely for the other's sake. Now, I give these talks a lot and I ask people, what is the way that God loves us? Eros or agape? And many people say, agape. And this is certainly true. God's love for us on the cross, Jesus demonstrates the ultimate selfless love that was purely a gift for our good and through it we have salvation. But Pope Benedict argues in his first encyclical, God is Love, that Eros, deeply infused with the fire of agape, is how God loves us. This means that his love for us is not stale. It's not some purely intellectual love. It means that he's, he's passionately desires to bless us, to, get, to, to lavish his love upon us. Jesus says in the dialogue about the Good Shepherd, he says, I am the Good Shepherd. I am not a hired man. I have the power to lay down my life, the power to raise it up again. No one takes this from me. He's saying, I, I will to do this. And if you needed more from me than the cross, I'll, I'll die on the cross again, or I'll die just for you. If, if, if that's what you really needed, I, I would do anything it takes. Now, I think the problem of how this relates to us in our lives is that in the secular world, we see a lot of eros divorced from agape. We see a lot of things that are a passion, a lot of passion, but without the skeleton of really a framework for love, a love that is directed towards selflessness and, and good for the other. There's plenty of things to excite us, but often they leave you and I feeling empty and hollow afterwards. Sometimes also, on the other hand, in the church, we see agape divorced from eros. It's this idea of love, this selfless love in the right direction, but without any fire behind it. I just went to Easter Mass a couple weeks ago and it got to the part where they're saying the hallelujah, the word that we have fasted from saying for 40 days. And everyone in the church, including myself, gets to the gospel reading and we say, hallelujah, thanks be to God, hallelujah. <laughs> there was a problem here. There was a problem because our, our hearts have a natural disintegration of these two loves from concupiscence. But Jesus desires to reintegrate our eros and our agape, like his heart is integrated. This is what is meant by the redemption. Your desires are not inherently bad. The path to purity is not a repression of your eros, is not a, a taking away of all your passions so you become this like mindless robot. Rather, it's this. It's opening the raw material of our passion before Jesus and allowing him to give it new form to redeem our desires so that we can deeply infused with agape selfless love so that we may live lives of freedom that are beautiful, oriented toward the gift.